OK. So Cyril Mottier, I think many of you already know him. So he's a Google developer expert on Android and is working as an Android engineer at Capitaine Train. He will be presenting deep dive into uh, state restoration. Thank you. So hi, everybody. Do you hear me? Yeah, it's OK. OK. So a quick introduction. So as um, uh, Stefan said, uh, my name is Cyril Mottier. So you can find me on Twitter at Cyril Mottier or on my own website, uh, cyrilmottier.com. So if you have any question regarding these slides or if you just want to talk about Android, of course, uh, Jen, just contact me on uh, those um, social networks. Uh, I work at Captain Train, so I think you all know uh, Captain Train because we, you, you probably used it to come here by train. But basically what we do at Captain Train is to um, revolutionize the way that you travel by train. And we do that on several platforms. Uh, the first one is obviously the web, which is our original platform. So you, you just have to go to captainrand.com. But we are also uh, available on mobile and, of course, Android, because I'm in charge of the uh, Android uh, application, after all. But we also have a great, really great iOS app. And uh, we, are all, we are also available on an Android Wear, and we are really proud of it, because we've released the first version of this uh, application this summer back in the summer. So feel free to use it. It's a nice app, of course. Um, so let's skip all the, uh, this quick introduction and start with uh, the subject I'm here to talk about. Uh, and I'm here to talk about a uh, deep dive into uh, state restoration on Android. And in order to um, you know, introduce this subject, I would like to give you a, a small story of a developer I've called Kevin, but I think everybody will recognize itself in, in Kevin. So this is the story of Kevin, the story of a newbie Android developer. And this is, uh, as I said, you will probably recognize yourself in this story because uh, as, uh, when, I, when I started developing on Android, I faced the exact same problem. And uh, this talk is here to explain you how to overcome, overcome all of these problems. So Kevin is a great developer, but is not an Android developer. So he, starts, um, he started uh, developing his first Android app, and it looked like that. Um, so I guess you, you yeah. well, the, the projector is not nice, but uh, it's a great application. And here, maybe you can see that uh, all fields are, are um, filled. So when, um, before publishing the application, Kevin decided to, to start you know, testing his app. And uh, while testing it, he discovered that when rotating the device, the fields are cleared. So basically, it means that the UI, uh, the, the, the state or the information that the user has given has been lost. So he's quite you know, confused about that. So he started to think about how to solve the problem. And um, after like five minutes of thinking, <laughs> he came up with three options. The first one is not to care about it. Well, it's an easy option, but it's not a good option. The second option he thought about is to block the orientation. So instead of thinking about what's the problem, he decided to stop Android from restarting the application on rotation, which is not an option, uh, a, a great option either. And the third option he thought about is to use config changes, the config changes flag in the Android manifest. And uh, yeah, there is a small hint at the bottom. All options are you know, bad, really bad. But, but because Kevin is a newbie developer, he decided to go for the third solution. So to, to prevent the system from blocking the, um, the, the process of killing the activity and recreating it uh, with the new configuration. And in order to do that, you just have to go to the Android manifest and you add a config changes flag on your activity. And here, you just have to say to the system that you will handle the orientation on yourself and that's it. So Kevin is quite satisfied with this solution, and he decides to publish the application just like that. But after like maybe one hour uh, of av availability on the Play Store, he, he started to receive some new complaints, uh, some complaints about the application. And these um, complaints were exactly the same, but on another uh, configuration change, which were language change. So if you start changing the configuration, like the language, here again, the fields are cleared. So, um, so Kevin is quite confused about that. And 
it start the same process of thinking about how to solve this problem, and he obviously uh, ended with quite the exact same solution, which is to deal to say this, to the system that he will handle the locale itself. He, publ he publishes the app, and once again, he starts receiving some new uh, feedbacks about the, the state of the application being lost. So Kevin is quite angry. So how do we solve that? Well, he starts saying that <laughs> I'm managing all configuration changes. So this is really bad for two reasons. The first reason is that you're not future-proof. So for instance, if in Android Dell there is a new config change, then you're not dealing with it. And uh, obviously, it's also really bad because it basically means that you're breaking the resource switching mechanism. Because this is one of the key features of Android is that you can handle live config changes. Um, you, you can say to the system, well, by default, the system handle live config changes. So for instance, you can have a layout for landscape or another one for portrait. And normally, you have nothing to do. But when you're doing that, well, this is up to you. As a developer, you have to handle all config changes. So this is really bad. But Kevin thinks that this will solve the problem. So he publishes the app once again. And after, after that, he continues receiving, receiving some feedbacks about the state being lost. And this is because um, when the application is in background, the process may kill your activities. And, and this process of, being, uh, of killing the activities is exactly the same as the one that you have when uh, you are changing the configuration of an app. So basically, all, all the, of the, what uh, Kevin has done is bad. And the, the, the good way to do that is to save the state. So I, I'm sure you know that. Go save the state. It's, yeah, just go save the states. So let's deep dive into um, uh, the basic components of how to save the state. Now that we know we, that we have to save the state, let's understand how Android deal with uh, UI state and state in general. So in, in order to do, to do that, I'd like to start with the basic components of uh, state, uh, state saving and, and restoration. And uh, I think the basic component <coughs> is very simple because there is just one single class, which is the parcel. Parcel, so it's, you can consider it as the container. It's a blob of data that you can put data in it, of course, and it can be uh, saved uh, by the system so that you can, um, so that it can be restored uh, afterward. And in this container, you can put some uh, objects, of course, and um, the content is very basic. It's low level, so you can have lots of different types of values, but most of those are primitives. So the first one, obviously, is primitive types. So you just have to call parcel.writein, write long, write throw. And uh, as you can notice, there is no key, no index. Nothing is indexed. Actually, it's, um, the order that you're putting the data in is the exact same order you will read the, the data from. You can also put primitive arrays in it, like an int array, uh, uh, an array of long, an array of double, or, or of, of string. So this is very low level, but fortunately there is a protocol which is called parcelable that can be used to put some uh, more evolved data right inside your uh, your parcel objects. And th this uh, parcelable uh, protocol is uh, very similar to serializable, you know, the the one from Java, but it's um, well it's it requires more code, obviously, because everything has to be written by the developer. But it's also uh, more efficient, like 10 to uh, 20x. So here is a very simple uh, example. So we have a suggestion object, which contains three fields, ID, name, and type. And uh, well, it has a public constructor, which takes an ID, name, and type. And uh, the interesting part here is uh, when you implement possible, you have to implement two methods. The first one is describe contents, which basically describe the content. Most of the time, you will return always zero, but you can return some other flags. But um, I, I won't, you know, go into details about these flags because they are not useful when you are saving the state and restoring them. But you have to, um, you know, Im implement this method. So most of the time, you return zero. And the other method is write to parcel. So it's it, is, it gives you two um, parameters. The first one is the parcel that you have to put your data in it. And the second flag is, once again, some flags that are not really useful once again for state restoration, but are useful when you want to pass some file descriptors on some active objects. 
Um, and uh, in this right to parcel method, well, what you have to do is just to serialize your state, your, your object or your whatever you want uh, to put in the parcel. So here, what I want to put in is basically the state of my uh, suggestion object, which is the ID, the name, and the type. And that's, that's it. Everything is saved right inside the parcel. Well, actually, that's not it. Um, and the problem with Java is that uh, maybe Groovy will be better. Um, <laughs> uh, the problem with Java is that um, an interface always uh, just uh, forces you to have one type of method. And this type of method is um, some virtual method that you have to implement. But, but you can't force a developer with an interface to uh, have a static field, for instance, in, 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 uh, in your class. This is not possible in Java. So the parcel label um, class is quite, or, I mean, the documentation is quite weird because it forces you to have a particular static field uh, inside your uh, classes, which is the creator, uh, which is actually the uh, counterpart of write to parcel. It's, it's called by the system to uh, create a suggestion object from a parcel. So here we have two methods in the creator, which has to implement parcel.creator. We have uh, a create from parcel, which will pass you a parcel, and you have to read a suggestion in it. Here you can see that we read the, uh, the, the parcel in, in the exact same order that we have uh, right into it. Uh, we have wrote, sorry, into it. And uh, there is another method, which is new array, which basically uh, tells, uh, uh, tells the system how to create a new, new instances of suggestions. And that's pretty much it. Here we have a parcel label object, so suggestion is now ready to be put uh, inside um, a parcel. And we'll see later that this is the only basic component that we need to save state. If we deep dive actually into the, the API, there is uh, several, met, uh, th several interfaces. The first one, as I said, is parcel label.creator. So this is the base creator interface, but there is a new, um, new creator type that has been introduced, I think, in Onicom, which is class loader creator. Uh, so it has a new method which uh, pass you, passes you two, actually, uh, arguments. The first one is the parcel, but you can also get the class loader that has been passed when uh, reading the, the parcel level. So this may be useful when you're creating uh, evolved object, not just a primitive, pr uh, primitive um, uh, uh, types. And finally, if you're going through the compatibility stuff, you know, all that stuff, you can go to Android, um, the, the Android support library, and there is parcelable compat, uh, which uh, you can use to create some parcelable object that are compatible between Onicom and uh, post-onicom object. So as, with, as we have seen, this um, interface is quite low level, it's boring, it's, there is plenty of libraries out there to help you uh, um, create or generate the code for parcelable, but there is also uh, an API that is bundled, which is uh, more evolved and which is based on a key value map and it's typeface. So you can use bundle if you're bored with parcel or parcelable, you can use bundle because a bundle is a parcelable object internally. And to finish with that um, first introduction, I'd like to point out something which is very important, is that the fact that parcel internally uses reflection in order to, to let the system you know, uh, get the, the instance of the creator. So that it's able to, to create some instance, instance, uh, sorry, instances of your um, objects. So beware of ProGuard, which basically strips out all of the unnecessary code and creator uh, from ProGuard point of view is not necessary. So you have to make sure that there is a, a flag in your configuration to prevent ProGuard from removing the creator object. And this is actually done by default with the um, Android SDK configuration. But if you're doing your own, make sure to, to put um, uh, a flag here. So now that we understand, uh, understood, sorry, uh, how to save the state in an object, let's deep dive really into how Android deals with state. And the first interesting things to learn about is obviously the activity, because this is the, at the root of, of the entire um, state restoration mechanism. And in order to do that, I'd like to um, give you um, a sneak peek on, on how Android deals with uh, configuration changes. So when you're creating an activity, well, you're being called in onCreate. And in onCreate, there is a, a, an argument which is called save instance state. It's 
quite weird, but actually when you're creating it for the first time, it will be null. So if you're doing back, for instance, so you're quitting the activity, then that's it. You're done with the activity and nothing else has been called from the stage restoration lifecycle point of view. But if you're starting to change the configuration, so for instance, you're going from portrait to landscape, then you will be called in a method called unsaved state, unsaved instance state, sorry, with a non-null bundle. And this is, this is in this method that you will save your state. So for instance, we'll see later the, the fields, uh, you know, for uh, the Kevin example. Um, so unsaved instance state is generally called, uh, called um, pre, um, uh, Pre unpaused in post, oh, sorry, um, gets called prior unpaused on pre onicom builds, but it gets called pre unstop on post onicom builds. And I'm, I'm saying generally because if you read the documentation, you have to make sure that you're not relying on this. This is something that is, you know, from my experience, true, but it may be wrong in, in, the, in future version of Android. So never assume uh, anything about uh, unsaved instances being called at a certain point of time. Uh, a certain point in time. So now that we have a state that, is a, a, that has been saved, we can, you know, chill down the activity and recreate it with the new configuration. And in this configuration, you're, you're called the onTrade method. And you've been passed the bundle that you've populated in onSaved state, instance state. And then, once again, if you've done the work in onTrade, then you're done, but you, you can also use the onRestore uh, instance state method. And if you're changing the, the configuration again, then you go back to on save instance state, on create, and on restore instance state. So this is the life cycle the, 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 uh, that you're uh, following when, when you're changing the configuration. And this is exactly the same um, path that the system is following when uh, doing low on memory. So m make sure to keep that in mind. And if you're you know, finishing the app for a good, a good reason, for instance, you're doing back, so if the user really wants to, to quit the uh, activity, then you just go through, uh, after unrestore, you're, un you're destroyed and that's it. So this is the, um, you know, the pattern that you have to follow, but actually I've not explained what to say. And actually what you have to say is just some non-persistent and non-reconstructable info. So what does that mean? It basically means that you shouldn't save, for instance, the, the, the size of of a view, because this is something that can be recomputed easier uh, later. And actually, it's some, this is something that is based on a configuration. It's not configuration independent. So you have to make sure that all of the data that you're saving is configuration independent. So what can it be? Actually, most of the time, I think it's only some data or some info that has been given by the user. So for instance, the text in an entity text or the check state of a checkbox. So let's go back to our example. For instance, we have a search activity here and we want to save the, um, the, the outward date. So in on save instance state at the bottom, here we go through the super method and we put the, the state uh, of the uh, outward. And in on create, well, it, in state is not null. It basically means that we are recreating the um, activity after a configuration change or, or a low memory condition, then you, you recreate the components, um, the date components from the state outward, and you set this uh, to your activity so that it can be restored uh, efficiently. So what does unsaved instance state in activity does by default? Well, it, say, it saves three stuff. The first thing it saves is the window. So basically the window is the root of your view hierarchy. We'll see later what it means, but <coughs> this is where uh, most of the code that saves your UI will be uh, will lie uh, will lie in. It also saves your fragments because fragments are tied to activity, so basically they have, they have the exact same uh, lifecycle. So when on save instance that gets called on activity, it forward all of that to uh, your child fragments, and it also saves dialogues. The dialogues now are quite deprecated, so I've left it here because actually Android is still managing dialogues, but you should now use Fragment instead. And one important thing to notice is that um, there is no guard here, actually. When you're not calling the super method in on save instance state, well, the system won't say anything, uh, contrary to on create or on pause, on, on stop. All those methods are actually guarded by the framework, 
but on save instance state or on restore instance state are not saved. So if you're not going through the super method, then the UI state won't be saved, the fragment state won't be saved either, and the dialog either. So make sure you keep that in mind, you always call the super method. And there are some cases where, rare cases where you don't want the state to be saved. This is uh, really rare, rare actually, and this is um, normally not needed by most developers, it's actually only needed by developers creating launcher app. So this is a flag that is not very common, uh, this is something that you have to put in your Android manifest on the activity tag, which basically tells, tells the system that it's not necessary to save the state. And, and this is um, because when an app crashes or an activity crashes, uh, the system will look at the, the, the state that has been saved, and if it's not valid, then the activity is wiped away from the, ta the task of activities. So basically, you will end up with the uh, previous activity. But if you're telling the system the state is not needed, then the state is always valid. So it's, uh, it tells the system that this activity on crash can be restarted. And this is very efficient or useful for a launcher because launcher is like the final activity in your stack. So it has to be recreated when it crashes. So it's only necessary for this type of cases. And finally, how to you know, test that? Well, there is a developer option for that. And it's available in the um, developer option uh, menu in your settings app. And this is uh, very efficient, actually. This is very useful when you're developing. So you can obviously, uh, and I encourage you to do that, to enable it when you're, um, uh, when you're saving, uh, when, when you're developing, sorry. And yeah, so you just have to, yeah, check this flag, don't keep activities. And it basically uh, means that whenever you're you know, navigating from one activity to another, the previous activity will be destroyed, but not in, in the, just like it would be uh, in a raw memory condition or on a configuration change. So this is the um, activity uh, you know, level or point of view. But as I said, uh, activity is just like the root of everything. But there is also another, uh, side of it, which is the view level, of course, because most of the UI state is based at the view level. So when you're uh, state, uh, restoring or saving state at the view level, most of the time you have nothing to do because the system is smart enough to take care of everything for you, but uh, I can, yeah, it just works, as uh, Apple would say, uh, but actually there are some cases when it doesn't. And uh, to make it work, and actually I think that you think it automatic, automatically works, uh, um, it's because you are in your, sorry, you're uh, following those rules. And uh, maybe you don't know about those rules, but actually you're following those rules to, to help Android to restore, to save and restore the state. And those rules are to have a constant, an ID for a view, for a view to be saved, it has to have an ID. It has to have save enable, which is, true by default, so most of the time you have uh, all your views to be uh, saved by the system. And it has to come from the framework, which basically means that when you're creating a custom view, then you have to tell the system what to save, which is like uh, normal, because the system can't know what to save for you. So how does it work? So as I said previously, when the system is, uh, you know, <coughs> destroying the activity on config change or low memory condition, it's, ca it's calling on save instance state um, on the activity, which in turn is called activity, uh, window, sorry, save hierarchy state. So this window that save hierarchy state does actually four things. The first thing it does is to save the state of your content view, you know, the android.r.id.content. So it, it will uh, call save hierarchy state on this, map, this um, view. Then it will also save the currently focused view, because the currently focused view is the state of your UI. And then it will save two other things, which, is, which are the panels. So for instance, the overflow menu, if it's open in orientation portrait, you want to change the orientation, you want to have the, 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 the panel still open. And also it saves the uh, action bar state, which is not part of the uh, android.r.id.content. So let's, let's uh, have a quick example of how, how it works to, to save the hierarchy state. So here I have a very simple hierarchy with a relative layout which contains an edit text, uh, an edit view, sorry, uh, uh, which is edit text normally, not edit view, uh, text view and uh, checkbox. So 
How does it work? Well, when the saved DRC state it gets called, you've passed in a, a sparse array of parser level, and this is in this sparse array that you have to put your state. So basically, it will go through the hierarchy using a top to bottom uh, algorithm. So first, it reads the relative layout. The relative layout has an ID. It's save enabled, and it comes from the framework. So we can get a state from it, which is called S1 here. And we associate it with the ID of this, um, of this view. So here, ID uh, container. Then we go through edit view, or edit text, which has an ID once again. So we can extract a state, and we put that in the spot file. Then there is text view, but text view has no ID. So it's pointless for the system to save it, to save it because we won't be able to restore it. We won't be able to recognize this text view inside the view hierarchy. So we skip text view, and finally we read checkbox, and checkbox once again has an ID, so we can save it and put it inside our sparse array. <coughs> so if you want to construct the state here in this uh, algorithm, then you have two methods. The first one is save, set save in enabled. So basically what it does is that it tells the system that you don't want this particular view to be saved, but it doesn't prevent the, the top to bottom mechanism or top to bottom algorithm to, to continue. So it, for instance, if we call that on relatively out here, it won't call S1, it, it won't say S1, but S2 and S3 will still be saved. With the set save from parent enable, this is uh, a process that will prevent the, the, the dispatch mechanism to, the, to be uh, continued. So if we call uh, set save from parent enable on relatively out, then nothing is saved in our hierarchy. Okay, if we're doing that on edit, um, on checkbox, for instance, then relatively out is saved, but not checkbox. So this is the save, uh, the save process, but obviously the restore process is very similar. I mean, it's the counterpart of it. And um, here we have uh, actually the exact same view hierarchy, so we've changed the configuration. We have the sparse array that the system uh, gives, gives us. So we have the exact same um, dispatch mechanism which uh, consists of going from top to bottom. So first we, we read relative layout which has the ID container. So we go through the sparse array. There is a, a state which has the ID uh, container so we can apply it. Then we go to edit text which has a state S2. Once again we can reapply it. And finally, F3 can be reapplied to checkbox because the IDs are the same. So this works magically until you have unique and constant uh, IDs. IDs by definition are no normally supposed to be unique, but if you don't have a unique ID, then if you go back to the uh, slides here, for instance, if I have two checkboxes, then the state F3 will be applied, for instance, let's say that edit view or edit text is called checkbox then F3 will be applied both to checkbox and to um, edit uh, text. And this may actually crash because you're trying to reapply a checkbox state to an edit text, which is not possible. So we, you will uh, end up with a class cast exception. So make sure that your uh, IDs are unique and constant over configuration. This is something that is you know, mandatory for the system to recognize your, your uh, views um, throughout configuration changes. So as I said, this works quite magically if you're only using, um, uh, only using uh, views coming from the framework, but sometimes you're creating custom views. And when you're creating custom views, well, you have to do some stuff on your own. And this uh, consists basically on doing two stuff. First, you have to create an inner class which extends base safe state here. So let's say that this is an uh, image checkable or checkable image, for instance, so it has a state of being checked or not. So in this state, what I have is a checked uh, int, because you can't save a boolean in a parcel, so you have to go through an int. Well, uh, and uh, this checks, uh, checked uh, flag will actually contain a checked state of our class. And this base save state is actually a parcelable object, so we have to implement write to parcel, where we write the check state, and we also have a creator here, which consists on uh, creating a new safe state based on the parcel that, it, that has been passed, and also a new array method to create some new safe state instances. So this is very straightforward, but this only saves the state. 
uh, I mean, it's a container of state, but it doesn't really save the state. What you have to do then is, on your view, is to override two methods. The first one is on save instance state, which gets called when you have to save the state. And in this method, what I do is, well, to create a new save state, I, I set the checked um, flag to uh, the current state of the uh, of the uh, ch uh, image uh, checkable image, and I return this state so that the system can save it. And on the other side, when you're restoring the, the view, well, you get called in on restore instant state, which gives you a parcel about object, which is actually your um, uh, your save state. So you call through the super methods to be able to restore the parent, and then you reply the, the state that you were you had previously. But this, this is quite simple here, the, the, the code is quite straightforward. So when you're doing a very easy uh, custom view that is just a view, not a view group, this is easy. But when you're creating uh, custom view groups, you may end up with some problems. And here, here is a good one, for instance. Let's say that I'm creating image box. Here, image box has a checkbox in it and an image view. But in my overall application, I use this image box twice. So I end up here with, well, two checkbox, uh, two, che two checkboxes with the exact same ID. I have the exact same problem with image view here uh, on the right and on the, on the left. So when we, when we are doing that, by creating an image box, which is, you know, when you're creating it is, you know, not attached to any view hierarchy. So we don't think about this problem. Uh, we have no, no problem when you are only developing it without being attached to a view hierarchy. But when you're starting to use image box twice in your view hierarchy, then you end up with the problem I, I talked about uh, previously. And in order to, 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 to overcome this problem, then you have to, to tell the system that you will save the state on yourself. Actually, what we are going to do is to, um, instead of flattening the view hierarchy in the sparse array, we'll, we'll flattening the view hierarchy, I mean, the view hierarchy under image box on ourselves, and we will tell the system, this is my state, and uh, that's it. So basically, we will, we will try to create the exact same hierarchy of state, just like there is a hierarchy of view. And this works exactly the same way as we've done for the previous uh, example. So we override, we create, sorry, a new, new class, which, is, uh, which extends base safe states once again. And in this uh, class, we have a single uh, state, which is children's state. So it's a sparse array, of course, uh, in, in which you will have all the states of your child views, children views. We have, once again, a write to parcel. In this write to parcel, we write the sparse array to the parcel that has been given. And uh, finally, we have a creator to, be, to, to let the system create uh, your uh, view hierarchy, uh, your state, sorry. And here you can see that I've used uh, uh, the compatibility stuff from the Android support library. So this is the, the, the container of the state. So now how do I save the state of my children and do, how do I restore it? Then, it, once again, you have to override two methods, which, is, which are sorry, on save instant state and on restore instant state. So in on save instant state, what I do is just to go through all of my children and ask them to save their state using the save hierarchy state method. So here, it's a simple for, and for each sibling, I save the state, give, giving the children state's uh, object. And once I'm done, I can return it to the system so that it can save it uh, and, and re -give, uh, give, uh, give me back the um, parcelable object in on restore instances after the configuration has changes, changed. Sorry. And in this on restore instance state, what I do is, well, the counterpart of this is to reapply the state using restore hierarchy state. And with that, we have almost done. Actually, this has solved nothing because we have not told the system to stop, you know, going through the hierarchy. We have to tell the system that image box is like, you know, the, a leaf in our, in our hierarchy. We have to tell him not to save the state under the, under the, the image box object. So this, is, this can be done with the save uh, from parent enabled. But this would mean that you have to set save from parent enable false on all children, which is not really great. Actually, this is something that should be done by the parent. And this can be done by the parent using two methods, actually. You have to block the dispatch using dispatch free self only. So what dispatch free self only does is just to tell the system 
save myself, but don't save my children. Okay, so when I'm dispatching the save instant state, I just call dispatch with self only, and the system stops here. Uh, and in dispatch restore instant state, dispatch those self only, and that's it. The system will stop restoring the state from uh, this uh, image box object. And that's it, so this is the, 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 the view level. And between the activity and the view, there is most of the time now some fragments. So I want to do a quick uh, overview of how it works with fragments. Actually, it's very similar to activities in the way that activities, uh, fragments, sorry, are tied to activities. So most of the um, life cycles that are in activities are also available in fragments. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, it fragment actually blocks uh, the activity mechanism because a fragment is supposed to take care of its own view. So in order to do that, if you're using the framework, it's calling, if you're using the, um, when I'm meaning by framework here, is when you're using the frame, the fragment from the framework, then uh, the, the framework will use set state from parent enabled. But the problem is with this method is only valuable starting on ECOM. So when you're using the support library, actually what the support library will do is to, to, to wrap your, uh, your um, fragment view inside the no safe state frame layout, which will actually use the dispatch free self only and dispatch so self only to prevent the activity mechanism to dispatch the, um, the safe state uh, you know, process inside the fragment. So this is probably something that you've seen when you know, using the RC viewer or some stuff like that. Uh, when debugging your application, you're always wondering what is no safe state from layout. This is actually a view that is quite useless, but it only blocks the system, uh, the activity from saving the fragment uh, hierarchy because this is up to the fragment to save its uh, state. But actually, fragments as uh, rather complex, well, not complex, but more complex, uh, should I say, than activity, because a fragment can have uh, no activity, uh, no, sorry, no view. It's possible for a fragment to be detached, for instance, or to be put inside a, a back stack. And in those cases, actually, the fragment is not saved. Uh, only the view is destroyed, so we will only save the, the view, um, the view uh, state um, only. So you have to make sure to, to, to think about that. When you are, um, most of the time, the fragment and the view states are saved you know, at the same time, but there are some cases where only the view state is saved because the fragment is not destroyed. And this is the case, for instance, when you're using detach uh, on the fragment manager or um, on the fragment transaction, sorry, or add to back stack, which basically remove the view but keep your fragment uh, alive inside the back stack because only the view is actually the, the heavy part of a fragment, so destroying the view is a good way to to keep some memory uh, here. So this is basically how it works. Well, how, how can we do, what can we do with that except, uh, how can we go beyond uh, just saving the state? I mean, this is great, we can restore the state of the user uh, between configuration changes or low memory condition, but actually you can leverage all the stuff on your own if you want to, for instance, do some smooth transition between one activity to another or from one fragment to another. And this is a use case, for instance. Let's say that we are, we are going from A to B, from activity A to activity B, and uh, well, activity A and B have some very similar hierarchy, but you want the transition to be very smooth. So, for instance, if the check state is enabled on A, you want to be to, to have it uh, enabled on um, on A story, you have to have it enabled on B2. And here is a very simple process that you can use, which, is con which consists of basically saving the, the state of your first activity. Then you start B with no animation. You apply the state that you've saved from A to B. And then B will look like A. So you have uh, a very smooth transition. And you can then start an activity, or an animation, for instance, or whatever you want to have a smooth transition between two, two activities. So this is why one example of how you can leverage save and restore the, the save and restore mechanism to, to create some nice UIs. So let's let's finish with that. So I think we can summarize all this talk uh, in three uh, important uh, 
important part. The first one is always save the state. This is mandatory because don't try to go uh, against the system. The system is, is here, we have to deal with it, and, and there are some cases that you probably don't think about when developing um, your application. So always save the state so that the state is already restored uh, so that the user is not lost. You know, For instance, a, if a user checks a uh, checkbox, he doesn't want the checkbox to be unsaved. <laughs> I'm always, almost finished. So always save the state. Uh, only save essential information. So make sure that what you're saving is only non-persistent non and non-reconstructable non info uh, because all of those, all, all, everything that can be saved in a, that is saved for instance in the database or uh, that is saved in a, in a uh, that is saved for instance uh, like the view, view site then it's not necessary to save it because you can recompute it later. And finally use correct levels. What I mean by levels is that don't save something that is attached to the view at the activity level or something that is at a fragment at the view level. So make sure that you're only saving the state at the appropriate level. And that's pretty much it. Sorry for, uh, yeah, I'm late, but thank you very much. Thank you.